Church, can we be on our feet this morning, please? Draw, 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 draw from, from you again. Yeah. 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 We've come to draw, we've come to draw, draw. from you again this morning. We have not come to meet with any man. Our expectation is not from a man. Our expectation is from you. So beloved this morning, I want you to turn that song to a prayer. What is it you have come to draw from the Lord this morning? What is that area you are trusting the Lord for strength for this morning? What is that area you are trusting God for a revelation for this morning? Can you draw unto the Lord this morning? Can you ask the Lord to fill that void? Can you ask the Lord to minister to that need this morning? Basante rebo sheke yebo. Li basanta raba sikete yebo. Ye kasake rebo kusanta yebo. In Jesus. Precious name. We have prayed. Beloved, before we take our seat this morning, I want you to just use the next 30 seconds to just speak specifically to the Lord. What area you want to draw from him this morning? I don't know what that mountain is. I don't know what that challenge is. But thank God we serve a God that is kind and there is no God like him. He's incomparable. There is none like him. So this morning, be specific a personal time like this. Don't worry about the person on your left, on your right. A personal time like this in his presence gives you time and opportunity for the Lord to minister to your peculiar need. So just draw from him this morning. Tell him that area you are trusting him for a manifestation before the end of this week that we are in. And I am confident the Lord will meet you at the point of your need. If you believe so, can I hear you shout a loud hallelujah? God bless us. Please, you may be seated. God bless us. It's a unique opportunity once more to share with God's people this morning. And I thank God for that opportunity. And I pray that this morning, the Lord will find me usable as a pen of a ready writer. And for each and every one of us this morning, I'm praying the Lord will prepare our hearts, myself inclusive. That, that which the Lord wants to speak to his church this morning, nothing will take it away from you and I in the mighty name of Jesus. It is an opportunity once more in the presence of an awesome God that this month has declared unto his church that mountain be moved. So this month, the Lord is actually telling us that is a month that atmosphere is going to shift. And I thank God for the verses that the Lord has been using from the beginning of this month. The Lord has been using to open our eyes and our heart of understanding. And I am confident that this month, Whatever that mountain is in my life and in your life, in his church, this month, they will be moved in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, can I hear you shout a believing hallelujah? hallelujah? And so in the last few weeks, beginning from the first week, you know, the Lord opened our eyes of understanding that sometimes this mountain that we are complaining or worrying about are mountains we have created ourselves. Out of ignorance, Sometimes it's out of lack of trust. Often and none is from impulsive decision or thinking we know most likely when we don't even have a clue of what we are talking about. And the Lord helped us to understand as well that those mountains, even though we may have created them ourselves, thank God the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that even the lawful captive shall be set free. But adventure with my eyes wide open, with my two legs, I walked into that situation. He said, even such situations, he can still set us free. And so the Lord reminded us in the second service. I'm doing a quick recap so that you can begin to understand what the Lord has done for us already and where he has taken us so far. 
that those mountains can be moved. If the Bible says, with your faith, you can move mountains, it means with doubt sometimes you let that mountain tarry for too long. That's what he told the children of Israel. He said, you have encompassed this mountain for too long. It is time to move forward. Last week, by his grace, he opened our eyes of understanding to the secret to move mountains. That you need to identify that mountain. That inside every mountain, there is a treasure that is on wait, waiting for you to unlock. There is a destiny that you and I need to hold on to. And in identifying those mountains and calling them by his name, and thank God you did that even this morning already, you spoke specifically to him which area you are hoping to draw strength from. And to the glory of God, peradventure you have missed these messages that I'm talking about. Thank God for technology. They are on YouTube. Last week, the Lord reminded us of the three C's that you and I need if those mountains are going to move. You must be convinced, conviction. You have to confess it. And regardless of the situation or circumstance, be consistent in your confession. I don't know whether I've shared that testimony or that story here before of a message that I was listening to Frederick C. Price. He was ministering and telling somebody, you know, that the Lord is able to do something in your life. Just, you just need to share the testimony. And this young man came forth with his bad leg. And he was saying, well, I will start saying something once God starts doing it. Can you not see that my leg is still not able to support me and work very well? And the man said, I don't want to hear what the devil has done. Tell me what God is doing. And so by the time the young man got that conviction and he started confessing it, even though it had not showed up in the physical, he went back to his seat saying, thank God you have healed me. He left the service that day and he was going home. He got to his destination, coming down from the bus with his walking stick and everything. He missed his step. When he stood up, he realized he didn't need it anymore. Consistency. So we heard that last week. And peradventure, you have not, you miss, I mean, you were preparing with other things. I want you to go and listen to this morning's message. Because when the Lord told me the topic and the areas and the things he wanted me to focus on, I started asking myself. But when I listened to the morning service, I understood why God said that. We went through what the, Bible, what the man of God this morning called the architecture of a mountain. And once you understand that there are I mean, you and I, being a tripartite human being, there are elements to us. Then you realize that the dimensions of our mountain has to be addressed in those three areas as well. I'm trusting the Lord is speaking to somebody this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And peradventure, you are like me, sometimes, you know, you see a material, you don't go back to it. I will encourage you, go back to the newsletter at the beginning of this month of March. A senior pastor, when he was speaking to us that first week, said, they are what our, the Lord laid into the heart of our senior pastor here, and he listed them out, and they are what you can call the learning outcome that the Lord wants to see in your life and in my life in this month. So I will encourage you to go back to those learning outcomes. I mean, one of the things he talked about was, why do we even have to face mountains? And if God loves us so much that there is no God like him, why then is it that he still allows mountains to stand in our way? And most importantly, can our mountains glorify God? Can your mountains, can my mountains glorify this God? Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Micah. As we turn to our text this morning. Micah chapter 4. Because if you remember last week when we were talking about the secret to moving mountains, one of the things the Lord spoke through the mouth of his servant, Pastor Gaz, is that when you are faced a, with a mountain, you need to go to a higher mountain. Micah chapter 4. Let me read from verses 1 to 2. He said, in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established. He said, in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. Verse 2. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountains of the Lord, and to the house of the Lord, 
and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path. Beloved, those scripture, the way I'm ending there, that verse, she said, and he will teach us his ways so that we can walk in his path. Is the theme of what the Lord wants to speak to us over the next 15, 20 minutes. Is there a purpose to my mountain? Beloved, I don't want us to, because we have been speaking to the mountain, mountain move, mountain move. But I don't want us to leave this month and miss the totality of what God wants to do by moving that mountain in my life and in your life. Is there a purpose to this mountain? The man, that's why I said this morning, I now understood why God gave me that scripture. Because the man of God told us this morning in discussing the architecture of a mountain that when you understand the intent of God, the issue becomes a smaller problem to understand. Last week, we were made to understand that instead of spending so much time researching the problem, some of us, the moment they get a diagnosis, oh boy, they become an expert in that diagnosis. In fact, before the doctor speak, they start telling me, you know, they have done this study, they have done that study. They know everything about the problem that they are dealing with. But they forget about the God that is able to solve the problem. Is there a purpose for that mountain? Father, the Bible says in your presence, mountains keep. There is nothing in the mountain that I'm facing that is bigger than you. Your prayer this morning, your prayer today is, Lord, even as you move this mountain, because let me make you understand something. The mountain is going to be moved. Why? Because he has said it. So there is no argument in that area. But what I want you to focus on your heart on this morning is to say, Lord, the fullness of the purpose why you brought me through this path. Lord, I will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. The children of Israel had a choice when they were leaving the land of Egypt. Three days journey, they're in the promised land. Oh no, they spent 40 years. The Lord had to take them through a longer journey. A number of them didn't understand the purpose. They missed it. They didn't get into the promised land. I pray that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. The fullness of your purpose in bringing me through this path. The Lord will establish in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know, some of us may have listened regularly. I heard in the Lord, Pastor Iadebu, if he tells you the story of how he ended up in the redeemed church of God. It wasn't that I was just going all along the road one day on a Sunday. was like, oh, let me stop in redeem. No. There was a mountain that brought him there. And the purpose of that mountain was established in his life that he came to realize what God wanted to do through him. And he's still running with the purpose of that mountain today. When I was doing this study, I started asking myself, because I have always been a believer that our God does not create anything by accident. And anything he made in the physical is giving us an inkling of what he wants us to see in the spiritual. So when you look at ordinary physical mountain, this ones that is all over BC and all other areas around this country. Scientists said mountains of the world are what they actually call water towers. 60 to 80% of all fresh water, I'm not talking of salt water now, 60 to 80% of all fresh water resources in our planet is actually embedded in mountains. So when the Lord is reminding you <laughs> That there are treasures in that mountain, you better understand what the Lord is saying. If you look at a country like Pakistan, in fact, 80% of their irrigation comes from such places. Mountains. Populations, at least half of the world's population depends on mountain ecosystem, ecosystem to survive. A place like Rio de Janeiro in South America, New York, Nairobi even in Africa, Tokyo in Asia, a lot of their freshwater resources comes from mountain. So when you begin to understand, people spend thousands of dollars, 20% the world spend on tourism just to go and climb mountains around the world. Physical mountains. So what I'm trying to make you understand in essence is that whether physical or spiritual, whatever it is, there is a purpose for that mountain. And if the Lord takes you to that mountain, and as the Lord moves it out of the way in this month of March, if your focus is way too much on the testimony, you might miss the purpose of that mountain. 
If you look through the Bible, there are so many times the Bible talks about mountains, but sometimes he uses them, you know, symbolically. They're about, I don't know, 500, 600 when I was searching. I just did a quick Google search. Bible verses for mountain, more than 500, 600. After I clicked about three, four, five, six, I was like, okay, that's, that's a lot. Hello, somebody. And so this morning, again, I encourage you, go back to that first message this morning, understanding the architecture of a mountain. And this morning, the Lord wants us to take a journey through the Bible. And you see different mountains and the purpose the Lord used it in the life of his people. Mount Ararat, for example, in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 8. If you have time, when you get home later, read Genesis chapter 8 and 9. It talks about it in Genesis chapter 8 verse 4. That was historically, you know, archaeologists and all the rest of them now, they tell us that was where Noah's ark came to rest. Hello, somebody. 40 days he remained inside that ark until the water came down. You know the story. But I want you to focus on Genesis chapter 9 verse 11 and see what the Lord used in Mount Ararat to establish the purpose of that mountain. In Genesis chapter 9 verse 11, the Lord said, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of flood. Never again. That was what he said in that Genesis chapter 9 verse 11. It was a purpose of establishing an everlasting covenant. That was what that mount served in the life of Moses. It was through that place, on that mountain, even with all the testimony that, ah, oh, thank God, everybody in my family was saved. Oh, one thing the Lord did for him on that mountain was that the Lord said, I entered an agreement with you. The world is still going to come to an end, but I'm not going to flood it. Beloved, you have an opportunity this month as the Lord is moving that mountain to say, Lord, what is the purpose of this mountain in my life? Is there an everlasting covenant opportunity available for my family? And I'm trusting this morning the Lord is speaking to somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. Time may not permit us to dwell too much on what it means to have an everlasting covenant. But if you go to the book of Exodus chapter 19 and 20, you can read that when you get home. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 20. Numbers chapter 3, per adventure you are taking notes. And maybe, let's open up to Nehemiah chapter 9. I want to read from verses 13 and 14. Nehemiah chapter 9, from verses 13 and 14. You will see talking about Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb. In all of this scripture, there are so many names that particular mountain is called. But one of the things you will see there, it was on that mountain that the Lord first met Moses. It was on that mountain that they got the Ten Commandments. It was on that mountain that the Lord did a whole lot of things. What I need you to understand is that that mountain for the generation of that time was an opportunity for a generational covenant that they were able to run with. And so for adventure, you are commanding that mountain of childlessness to move in your life. You are commanding that mountain of barrenness to come to an end. You need to understand, maybe the Lord is uniquely positioning you Maybe in that family, every first daughter had had that problem. The Lord is saying, if you command this mountain to move, you establish a generational covenant that will be broken forever in that lineage. So you need to understand when the Lord is saying, command that mountain to move, there is a purpose why the Lord selected you to be the one to speak to that mountain. If you miss that purpose, the testimony will come but the generation that will have benefited from that battle may not be able to. And that's what I need us to understand this morning. Is there a purpose that the Lord gave you this particular mountain to speak to, to cause to move? If you go to the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 49, it talks about Mount Nebo. The Lord spoke to Moses in, in, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39, verse 49, sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 49. The Lord told him to go unto Mount Nebo so that he can see the land that is flowing with milk and honey. And in, Dennis, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 1, 
Deuteronomy 34 verse 1, the Bible says, finally, Moses climbed that mountain and he saw the promised land. I don't know about you. I'm an engineer. I look at drawings all day. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But at the end of the day, I'm still a visual person. And when I see that thing clearly, visually, thank God for technology that are there now, you know, with Inventor, with uh, SolidWorks, you can create models that look almost like real thing. I'm still a visual person at the end of the day. If you give me a 2D drawing, I can interpret it in my brain, but when you see the thing visually, it makes a difference. In that Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1, the Bible says, Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the place of Moab to the top of Pisa, across from Jericho, and there the Lord showed him the land, verse 34. In, on that mountain, it was for him a purpose of clarity of vision. Yes, he didn't get into the promised land, but when he saw clearly, by the time he goes back down to talk to the people, it was on that same mountain that Moses died. Don't get me wrong. But it was an understanding for him to see clearly, with clarity, what the Lord has in stock. So when he was describing it, it was clear enough that generations later that followed after him could say, this land of Egypt that we are in, this is not where we are going to end. The Lord is taking us somewhere. So I need us to understand that sometimes those mountains that the Lord is causing you to come to is to give you an opportunity to have a clarity of vision. If you just speak to the mountain and it moved and you just continue, you have missed something. I don't want us to leave this month without getting the totality of why God said the mountain must be moved. There is a purpose. A clarity of vision. So that when you begin to walk in all of those areas, when those challenges come, because you have seen that thing visually, you have seen the promised land. You have seen where the Lord is taking you to. No amount of panic, no amount of threat from the enemy can shake you. You look at them and you will laugh. You know, I know what the Lord has showed me. Our senior pastor here, Pastor Gide, repeatedly shared his testimony of his work with God. All of our pastors here, various testimony. And so, at some point, when you begin to hear what the enemy is saying or what the world is saying to you, because you have been to that mountain, you have seen with clarity what the Lord wants you to see. You have commanded the mountain out of the way, like the man of God was telling us this morning, the architecture of a mountain. You have dealt with it in the spiritual, but the remnant are still there in the physical. But because you have achieved the purpose of the mountain, you have seen with clarity, the remnant you see in the physical, they look like nothing. So you are able to speak to them with conviction. I'm trusting today in the life of somebody you will not miss your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. But most importantly, the purpose of that mountain shall be established in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. When you look at the story on Mount Carmel, 1 Kings chapter 18, from verses 16 to 46, I'm not asking us to read it, but what I want you to look at is in 1 Kings chapter 18. Let's look at verses 30 to 31, quickly. 1 Kings chapter 18. From verses 30 to 31. The Bible says, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he said, And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He repaired the altar that was broken down. Go on to verse 31. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the numbers of the tribe of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Before the miracle of the fire came to pass, there was a purpose for that mountain that was established in their life. It was a repairing of the altar and a renewal of their name. The enemy may have been calling you with the circumstances that you have been facing. At least they did it before. Blind Bartimaeus, they are calling you. Did they name him blind? His name was Bartimaeus. But they refused to call him Bartimius because of the challenges he was going through. Blind Bartimius, somebody is calling you. That was what they did. But on that mountain, 
the Lord reestablished their name. Even before the miracle came forth, if you miss the opportunity, the, the, the blindness goes away. But if he did not understand that today the Lord is making you understand that from this henceforth, your name is Bartimaeus, that the Lord has called you. Israel shall be thy name. They may have been operating out of that covenant of Israel, but on that Mount Camel, the miracle came forth, but there was a purpose that was established. Their name was reaffirmed. I don't know what area the Lord is taking you to. I remember one time when I was speaking to my dad after I gave my life to Christ. It was like, of all my children, how is it that of you of all persons, how did you, I mean, I grew up in an Islamic home. I'm sure I've shared that story with us before. I went to Islamic school. I started doing grammar school in, in Lagos. I practiced in school, the primary school. I went through all of those things. And then the man asked me, I said, maybe you should thank God that the Lord took me to that mountain. Say, because I should be asking you your grandfather's name, not your own father, your own grandfather, who is my own great grandfather, his name is Solomon. How did you move from Solomon to something else? And the man was thinking about it. I'm still praying, I'm still talking to him, but every time he talks, I, 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 I speak with him and I share the word of God with him, he will say, okay, well, you know, but he's not still committed. That's still a prayer point, and I encourage you to join me. But my point is, you need to understand. It's a reestablish. So I told him, and I said, I'm believing God. Before you will take your last breath, you will give your life to Christ. Whether you like it or not. The Lord will take you to that point. But my point is, you ought to understand what the Lord is saying about that mountain for you. Because if your focus is just on the testimony, the Lord has said it at the beginning of this month already. Mountain be moved. And if we are convinced, if we don't let doubt rebuild that mountain, then we know it is going to be achieved. The question is, is the purpose of that mountain in my life fulfilled? Can we bow our heart this morning as we begin to speak to the Lord? I don't know what your own mountain is. I don't know what you have spoken concerning it. I don't know what the Lord has revealed to you. But let me make you understand this morning. That mountain is going to be moved. In fact, that mountain has been moved. But what you need to understand is to say, Lord, this morning, the fullness of the purpose of why you brought me to this part, Lord, I will not leave this mountain without it. Go ahead and speak to the Lord. We will not miss the purpose of the mountain before us in the name of Jesus. As the Lord moves it, as it becomes a testimony, the lessons that we are supposed to learn, we will not miss it in the name of Jesus. We will not miss it, Lord. Open our eyes. Open our eyes, our inner eyes, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to church today. Uh, for those of you that made it out, the weather is getting nicer. Praise God for that. For those that are watching from home, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. It is well with us all in Jesus' name. Now I'm standing here and my iPad is on top of this beautiful edifice. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And we receive, we receive it and bless it in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And for the family that gave this to this church as a gift, I pray that the Lord will bless you, the Lord will increase you, the Lord will beautify your home, beautify your life, and everything that might be a mountain before that family. By the reason of this gift to the house of God, that mountain is moved in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, greetings from Pastor GD. Um, I, I said to him yesterday, the weather is warming up here too, so no more. In the, two weeks ago, I was like, you left me in the snow. It's so cold. But now it's like, no, it's okay, it's okay. It's warming up here too. Praise God. It will be back soon. Don't worry. It will be back soon by God's grace. Our video comes up on Friday. Please, let's take note of that. Because of COVID, we moved our Friday our video to teleconference. Now it's time to come back in-house. 
So I'm not sure of a certainty if that video will be live streamed. So just plan to be here, please. As many as are in town plan to be on site for that vigil on Friday at 10 p.m. One other thing that I would like us to know is um, our Friday, uh, Friday family movie time. The title says Mount Zion Hour. And this is from a conversation I had with someone. That doesn't mean that you only are allowed or asked to watch Mount Zion movies. Because someone said, oh, I watched a Mount Zion movie. I said, no, 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 no. It's just a name. Because if you have younger families, uh, younger children, they might not understand some of those movies. So find a movie that works for your family. As long as it's inspirational, it's godly, it gives room for conversation. We want it to be a time, quality time together as a family. And you can talk about things from the movies that you watch. So please let's keep that in mind. Praise the Lord. Daughters of the King, by the grace of God, our first on-site fellowship since COVID. We've been on doing it on Zoom. Now it's time to move back. So there's no live streaming and there is no Zoom. Save the date, Saturday, April 9th at 5.30 p.m. In-house here at Jesus' house. Make sure you are here. Tell your sister, remind your sister to be here. And um, I pass the message across to the excellent men and because they are terrific and excellent men, they've promised to keep the children at home so you can come, just you and your awesome self with your handbag. Can we just clap for all the excellent men? So the whole world has heard that you're going to keep your children at home. Yes. You keep, sir, let's not go there. <laughs> Amen. Shall we rise to our feet as we share the grace? So please support your wife. Please keep the children at home. Let her come so that we can concentrate. This is our first on-site one since COVID. Let's come and, you know, be able to do everything that we want to do. Father, we bless you for this service. We thank you for the words that you've spoken to us from the first service to the second service and to the third service for the youth and young adults. We thank you for what you're doing in this house. We do not take it for granted. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that is always with us. We thank you for this new week because it is blessed. We thank you for this new week because you've gone ahead of us already. We give you praise in advance for the testimonies that will come out of this week in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go forth from this place, I ask, Lord, that every opportunity out there that you want us to take advantage of in witnessing Jesus to people around us, in equipping the saints, Father, Open our eyes to it and grant us the grace to not miss those opportunities in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you've answered us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you.